I'm joined now by former British commander Richard Kemp. Richard, thank you so much for your time. Look, let's start with the ICC decision. Do you think it morally confuses the oppressors with the oppressed, the victims of the October 7 massacre with those who are trying to destroy them? Yeah, this, this uh, attempt to arrest Netanyahu and his defence minister is nothing short of an obscenity. It's, it's actually... The, the, the ICC is the successor to the Nuremberg War Tribunals after the Second World War. And it's almost the same as trying to indict Hermann Goering and Heinrich Himmler, but also indict at the same time Winston Churchill and uh, President Truman. It's the, same, it's the same kind of attempt to have moral equivalent, equivalence mm. between vicious, brutal mass murderers and democracies that are trying to, de to defend their own people. I mean, can you imagine... You know, you draw the comparison with World War II. Can you imagine if we had the woke left brigade then that we have now, there'd be calls not to go defeat Hitler and the Nazis or to free people from concentration camps because people would say, oh, you know, you're going to cause civilian loss of life. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's tragic. The civilian lo loss of life in Gaza is a tragedy. Absolutely. But it is entirely due to Hamas. If Hamas had not invaded Israel mm. with such barbarity on the 7th of October, then there would be no war in Gaza, there would be no casualties in Gaza, no deaths. It's entirely down to Hamas. Mm -hmm. And Israel has taken the most extraordinary steps to minimise civilian casualties in Gaza, despite... It's the actually opposite of what so many people in the media, in the UN, in the International Criminal Court accuse Israel of. Well, the ICC prosecutors relied on a panel. The panel was far from impartial. It, you know, it was stuffed with some Hamas sympathisers. But, you know, they accuse Israel of crimes against humanity, of war crimes. They claim they were targeting civilians. Can you tell us a bit about um, what the death toll, the civilian death toll figures in Gaza actually show and how they compare with other wars? Yeah, and the ICC is a, is a political court, it's a kangaroo court, which has no jurisdiction in this case over Israel anyway. But they're nevertheless attempting to seize jurisdiction to prevent Israel from defending its people. And one of the main allegations is civilian casualties. In, by my calculations, on the figures I've got available at the moment, the, the civilian to military death ratio is 0 0.8 to 1. In other words, 0 0.8, less than one civilian killed for every combatant. Terrorist. That, every terrorist. And that is a terrible thing, of course, but this is a terrorist organisation that is fighting, hiding within its civilian population, and Israel, despite all its efforts, has no choice but, unfortunately, to, to kill civilians while trying to get to Hamas. And how but does if that you ratio compare? Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, if you compare the 0 0.8 to 1 ratio uh, that Israel has achieved, if you look at Afghanistan and Iraq, in Afghanistan, the ratio was five to one, five civilians for every terrorist killed in Iraq, three civilians for every terrorist killed. That's by US forces, a similar level probably from British forces as well. Mm. But hugely worse. I mean, they, and th those countries did their best to minimise civilian casualties as well. Mm. The Israelis have achieved a great deal better than that. Now, we see the news overnight that Israel is recalling ambassadors in three countries that plan to recognise a state of Palestine, even mm. though Hamas is the governing body in Gaza and the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank uh, virtually agrees with the October 7 terror attacks. Yeah. Um, what do you think of this move? Well, I think Israel is absolutely right to, uh, to take this action. And what, what these countries and the United Nations General Assembly, which voted to recognise the so-called state of Palestine. What these countries are doing is they are rewarding terrorism. They are rewarding Hamas, supported by the Palestinian Authority, by the way, uh, on what happened on the 7th of October. It's, it's absolutely despicable, and every country should reject this and certainly not even contemplate recognising a state of Palestine, particularly at this time. Yeah. Look, you've been in Australia for about three weeks now. What's your assessment of the levels of anti-Semitism that we're experiencing here and, and how it compares to the UK and the US? Well, I've spoken to many Jewish people in Australia since I came here, including quite a large number of students and high university and high school students. And they've told me many stories about how, the way they feel intimidated, whether it's on the streets, on university campuses or, or wherever. 
and basically this is um, it, it's anti-Israel sentiment and anti-Israel action, um, which is basically the new form of anti-Semitism. It's anti-Semitism mm. in some ways in disguise. Exactly. And it's a similar situation as exists in the UK and the US. Mm. And actually, if you look below the surface, these people, and I've spoken to students at their, their what I would call Jew-hating camp and at Sydney University, I've spoken to them. They refuse to condemn Hamas. They ref they can't really explain what they're doing there. Some the of them even support Hamas. Of course, indeed. Yeah, and they say they say so openly. They do, and, and and actually, if you scratch the surface of most of these protesters, they don't really know the cause. But what they do know is that they're opposed to Australia, they're opposed to Britain, they're opposed to the U.S. Mm. These are people who, uh, who jump on the anti-Israel bandwagon in many cases as a means to undermine and, and express their displeasure at our society yeah. and our values. Yeah. Look, we hear a lot, um, you know, from, from people saying, oh, anti-Zionism is distinguishable from anti-Semitism. And in fact, there's an entire article on the ABC website about this, by the way, even though they haven't co covered the anti-Semitism crisis in any meaningful way. But yet, you know, you, you look at some of the videos that the students put up, the pro-Palestinian students, which I have, and they're chasing Zionists mm. off campus. Well, that is basically chasing Jews because the majority of Jews support Israel, which is, of course, what Zionism means. Yeah, anti-Semitism, uh, sorry, anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Mm. There is no doubt about that. Mm. And the, the reality is that these, these encampments, these protests which have accelerated a lot and expanded since the 7th of October, existed in many ways before that. They exist to pressure governments like the Australian government to oppose Israel's defence, oppose Israel's existence. And um, at the same time, they, the, the, the second reason for their, their presence is to intimidate Jews, because, of course, Jews are the main supporters of Israel in our countries and they try and intimidate them out of supporting Israel yeah, exactly. and they succeed in many cases. We have had a lot of support from Christians here too, which has been yeah. wonderful. Uh, Richard Kemp, it's been uh, terrific to have you to, and to meet you in person as well. Um, so thank you very much for your time and of course your trip is thanks to the Australian Jewish Association. Really appreciate you. Thank time. you, a great pleasure.